Hi, it's Ollie from Cross Platform Gaming, and again today I'm joined with Dan. Say hello, Dan. Hello. And today we're jumping right on the YouTube trend bandwagon, and we're going to do a tier list. And today's tier list comprises of, well, not all, but most of Ubisoft's releases and their big franchises. So let's see where we're placing them. Okay, so first up we have Assassin's Creed Origins. Now, um, I I have only ever really played the first Assassin's Creed game and the third Assassin's Creed game. So I'm not particularly an expert at this. However, um, the good news is that you are. Yeah, so Assassin's Creed Origins was the first Assassin's Creed game that I pre-ordered in uh, maybe not 10 years, but going close to that because I feel like Ever since Ezio went and we had Connor with Assassin's Creed 3, the series stagnated from there. And then it was just yearly iterations and it it's almost became like FIFA, where they're just pumping out annual games and it kind of lost its um, pizzazz, let's say. Um, but Origins was, I think they had a two year gap um, since Syndicate, which I think was the one previously. Brand new setting in Egypt, which was something that people always wanted. And it was a whole new way, sort of stylistically. It was more of an RPG thing, so you had a character that had levels and you built them up and you did skills and things like that. Um, and I feel like it was quite a return to form for the series, and I believe that that was also the catalyst in the hype, and as well as Oddity that we'll come on to, but also the catalyst for the hype that Valhalla's getting at the minute. So I would actually put this one quite highly, especially in comparison to the other Creed games that we'll come on to. So my opinion on this one would be either. A or B. I'm thinking sort of a top half of B because S obviously takes a lot, but A is going to be, there's going to be some pretty stellar titles in there, but B isn't to be sniffed at at all because we've got six lettered categories. So I'm saying top half of B. I don't know if you have anything you wanted to add to it when you said you've not really played it, but what would you say? I haven't played this. So, I mean, I'm, I'm happy to put it as B if you are. Yeah, let's go. Let's go top half of B. Should we go for where we're ordering them, obviously, as tiers, but in the tiers, we have an order amongst themselves as well. So you have, yeah. like, if for B, for example, or top half for B, and then from left to right is worst to best in that tier. I mean, it might make it a bit intricate, but let's go for that for now and see what happens by the end. Because at the end, we could come to it and discuss with any movers and stuff like that, and we can make it more of a finalised thing by then. So this is sort of subject to change, I'd say. Yeah, okay, that's fine. Um, uh, do you know what? I'm not going to go alphabetically on this, because it's just going to be, like, series, like... Game one series. It's going to be two, a, the whole Assassin's Creed franchise. <laughs> yeah. So I'm just going to pick a uh, random one. So uh, let's go for another massive franchise. Um, and this time it's Far Cry 4. So um, my, I guess, history of playing this game is only very, very recent. Uh, in fact, in the lead up to Far Cry 6 coming out, um, I have only just started playing this, as you well know, Ollie. Mm -hmm. And so far, I would say. Um, it's on the same sort of lines as uh, Far Cry 5, which I thought was an excellent game. Um, mostly, again, due to villains. And I know this, the, the villain in this one is particularly good. Um, I would say, you know, even after only a couple of hours of gameplay, really, uh, this is probably in the higher category. So I, I would say an A. Okay. Um, for me, obviously, as you know, quite a big Far Cry fan myself. Um, I'd agree that, I mean, I've not played this one as much as the um, the other ones, but I would agree when I say so far for four, it is potentially looking like it's going to be on par with five, and I enjoyed five as well as you. Um, Villains-wise, I'd say that it was good because it was quite a change from the rest of them. So obviously the Far Cry games are quite known uh, for their villains, but this villain had more of sort of an emotional connection to the main character. And they weren't sort of angry with them or anything like that. And it was a different take on the villain thing. So I think that was quite intriguing. Um, but gameplay wise, it plays pretty much the same as five. I mean, I feel like we've done them in the wrong order by going five to four, but um, it doesn't play badly at all. The one thing that I noticed was that I'm clipping through a lot of things. But I mean, nowadays, that's what games are. You don't get finished games in this day and age. Um, so I'd say sort of bottom half of A for this one. Yeah. Okay. I, I would agree with that. And let's jump in with the next one, which I am going to say is... Oh, cause some of these titles are really hard to read this far down. Um, let's go for Prince of Persia, um, just so that you got a, an idea of reference. This is the one that I'm looking at here. So uh, I am going to say with this one, I 
I haven't played it. Uh, uh, so the, I would I would quite easily find a category for this one. Okay. Um, I have. I owned it on 360. Um, it was all right. It wasn't that bad. But I think that it's either this or um, whatever the other one's called that I can see that's underneath uh, Revelations. Is it Sands of Time, that one? No, that was a good one. What's the one that... Can you see it? The one that's underneath it, Revelations? Was it Forgotten Sands? That's I, it. I, I, it's really it's small either, right, so I can't really see. It's either this Prince of Persia sort of soft reboot they did, the cell shaded one, or Forgotten Sands, which are the ones that almost killed the series off. So I think that needs to be something that's taken into account. Because when it was at its peak, it was actually a quality series. It really is the start of Assassin's Creed, because the first Assassin's Creed game another thing that we'll come on to, was originally meant to be a Prince of Persia game, so it started Ubisoft's maybe biggest series to date. Um, but the cell shaded one isn't as good as Forgotten Sands, so I would go for an E, I think. Yeah, that's fine. As I say, I, I haven't played it, so I'd be happy to put it there. Okay, so next I am going to pick from somewhere a little lower down the list. Um, and a game that I have played um, is Red Steel. So I haven't played the second one, which is also on this list. Uh, I've only ever played the first one, and I only ever played this on the Wii. So I'm not I'm not entirely sure if that um, says a lot about it. However, I do. It's remember, only on the Wii, isn't it? Uh, I I don't know. I I think so. I wasn't. I mean, I, I was. I've always been a gamer, but I've never really paid attention until fairly recently um, as to you know sort of what games are console exclusive. So uh, for me, I only ever played this one on the Wii, and I actually thought it was a really well um, interpreted game. So f- for the motion control, which was the selling point for the Wii, it was actually really smooth. Um, there were there were there were it was kind of a, almost like a Resident Evil vibe to it, but it was more of a I don't know, almost like a samurai shooter. It's a weird. Um, if you haven't played the game, it's, it, you should check it out. You know, even just watch some gameplay videos or something. Um, but yeah, it's actually quite quite a good game. It's not very long and it's not particularly complex. Um, it's it's kind of like a I would say if if you if you're an experienced gamer, you're gonna find it really easy. It was it was an all right concept though. So for me, I would have to put this middle of the park, and I would say either D or C. And just because it was on the Wii and it was it worked quite well on the Wii, I'm gonna say a C. I'm happy to do what you want to do because I've not played it myself. However. One thing um, about it for me is that whenever there's people that got the Wii when it came out and were Wii fanboys for a bit, because strangely enough, we once lived in a time where there were people that liked that sort of thing. (laughs) Um, One thing that they reminisce about and I hear a lot about is Red Steel, so it must have a place somewhere for people, so I I wouldn't disagree with it. But yeah, I've not played it myself. Okay, next. Um, Right, on to the next one. Um... Now, because I've been picking these in order, in order, do you want to pick the next one that we, that we talk about? Okay. One that I think... Oh, I didn't think when we first bought it that it would mean something to us, how it does. But I think there's a game here that means a lot to us and as an XPL cross-platform game in channel. That game being The Division 2, because <laughs> our first proper video was on The Division 2 when we were all playing together. And I think we quite enjoyed our time on it. Um, and for a long while, it was our most viewed video. So just for that reason, for me, I think it needs to be high. <laughs> but the actual game, I think, was quite solid and a, a solid build on the original Division. I wouldn't say it was the best game of all time, but it was fun to play. And we played it through, I think, its natural lifespan. I know it's still going and they're releasing things on it. But I mean, for myself, I'm done with it now. But the first few months of it, which is when a game's at its height, I think it performed quite well. It did have the odd bug at the start, but it's a massive online game, so that was always going to happen. Um, textures not loading and things like that. But the actual gameplay of it, I think, was quite fun, and the guns felt meaty. Um, gunplay in general was good, so I think it deserves to go decently high. Um, I don't know what you'd say, but I'd probably say top of B. Yeah, I mean, I'd be tempted to even push it into A um, if you know if we if we aren't too bothered about overfilling certain categories. Um, again, you know. In terms of uh, cross-platform, it was our first ever video. It was, you know, me, me, you and Jake all in one video together. Um, and it, it was just us having fun. And literally, this was 
um, I think I believe, uh, if I'm not mistaken, the game that kind of inspired us to all jump on and have yeah, a YouTube probably. channel. So um, for that reason, I, I think it was really good. Um, I do think it's one of the better looter shooters out there, or at least, as you say, it was whilst the sort of the the, the height of the game. Um, was about those first couple of months when literally all we wanted to do is all get online together and play um it just gets you back to that feeling of you know like oh i can i can go online when i get home and um you know just sit and play with my mates and we all have the same kind of experience yeah there was a couple of bugs but we could laugh about it and it was a great um multiplayer experience when we were playing together so um for me i I don't know if it's more sentimental than anything else but yeah i I would even potentially put this at, at, at a what do you reckon I'll be happy to go for a bottom half of A. Yeah. All right. That's, uh, I guess that settles it. Then I will drop it in there. This series, let's say, uh, if you can call it a series, it's only two games, um, has a special place in my heart because I am a massive, massive South Park fan. Um, so I, I've got both of these games, played them both, completed them both, absolutely love them. Um, they, they were thought out properly, which um, if you've ever played the uh the the i think it was like the playstation one game that was the south park one it was just that was not thought out at all uh you just throw snowballs at turkeys and random oh obs- i know obs- that <laughs> yeah. yeah and that's random terrible obs- yeah random obscenities uh just appear on like the screen and stuff and it's like okay well it's kind of it, it had the the childish side of south park but it never had like the full thought out method of south park so like the they will make a joke about you know really stupid stuff but if you look at the episode from the outside and not look at individual jokes, you see that they're actually kind of they're holding a mirror up to society and, and kind of taking the mick out of what we're what we're doing as a society. And these games just kind of really spoke uh, to me. So the first one I'll go with um, Stick of Truth was the better out of the two, um, not just because it was the first one, but I think it was because they they sort of encapsulated a lot of the Lord of the Rings and, and Harry Potter style stuff. And it was before the superhero franchises where it kind of went a bit crazy. Um, and it's just a really solid game. Like even people who didn't like South Park. So my dad, who's Dean on the channel, um, he's not always been a fan of uh, profanity, let's say. Um, and now he does enjoy the odd South Park episode. But even he played this game and fell in love with it. So I would say if it's going to push someone who isn't even a fan of the series that much and profanity itself to uh, to say it's a good game, I would put this as, I think, my first S. Okay. I'm all right with it. I mean, I've not played either of them myself. Um, but there is some... Two both games are games that I'm going to play because I've wanted to play them for a little while, but... As you know, I've got quite a big list of games that I need to get <laughs> yeah. my way through, so they're not purchased as of yet, but they will be. Um, I'm not, I've never been a huge South Park fan, but I can, you know, put up with a few episodes from time to time. Um, but the gameplay and stuff that I've seen, um, I fancy having it. They look like easy ones, and I like having games where I've got one game that I'm playing that's the more focused and driven thing that I've got my mind thinking about, and then one where I can have some downtime and play that. So at the minute, Last of Us 2 and then Saints Row that we're playing as the downtime one. Mm-hmm. So when I move from Last of Us 2 to Ghost of Tsushima, I could easily do something like South Park for the um, the downtime one. So yeah, that must mean something to someone that hasn't played it that they want to, so I can see why it would be up there for someone that's a fan of it. Yeah, okay, well, I'll, uh, I'll put the first one up there. For anyone who hasn't played the series, um, you can actually select your difficulty by selecting your race. Um, I've seen that as well. Yeah, so uh, obviously in particular um, political and social climates, um, I think that's more relevant than ever, you know, and they're they're making light of the situation, but, you know, effectively it's still highlighting um, what what some people are saying out there. Are you going to do anything with the second one? You may as well do both. Okay, yeah, fine. Um, (laughs) So, yeah, uh, the fractured but whole... um, Again, that was a great game. Uh, I'm not <clears throat> not going to have it up in the S rank because I think the the gameplay was changed a little bit and it was made into more of a turn based RPG kind of game. Um, it was still great. Um, I, I'm probably potentially looking at a B though rather than an A or an S. So um, just because it focused a bit on the superhero genre and. I'm a massive fan of the superhero genre, and when they were taking the mick out of it, it was like, yeah, it's funny, but some of the, the stuff kind of just missed the mark. I think. Just as an FYI to potential viewers slash listeners of listeners, um, 
when Dan says that that's an RPG, it could mean it's an RPG. It might mean it's not at all an RPG. <laughs> and to Dan, all of these games at the bottom probably are RPGs as well, just as a sort of disclaimer. Right, so I'm going to defend myself here. <laughs> If you're playing a game as a specific character and you're able to level them up and choose their different skill trees and stuff like that, I'm sorry, that is a role-playing game. Regardless of the genre that it is as well, it's still an RPG. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Skill trees and stuff. Yeah, I agree with that. But you didn't say that the other day. Well, I'm saying it now. Well, now <laughs> that argument sounds better, but <laughs> still. Okay, so <laughs> moving swiftly on. Um, Let's go for um, something that I don't know again. Um, and I'm going to say No More Heroes. Um, I haven't heard anything about this series, to be honest. Um, I didn't even research it for this list or anything. It's literally never cropped up on my radar. So I don't have anything to say about it other than I would put it in the haven't played section. Don't know much about it. I do know that um, it's a very big Japanese game and there's lots of... You get like almost cult followings for Japanese games in the West, I think. Um, so you've got, like, Yakuza guys like me. So I, I can relate to them. But I do know that there is, I think it's still TBC this year, um, that they get in the first numbered title in the franchise for some years. It, I'm guessing it's three, because there's one and two there. Um, and there's quite a lot of hype about it. So I think it is something that people like, but we're going to have to go haven't played, because I've not played it either. Yeah, and uh, I think we should probably just do both of them in there as well. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Um, and in the interest of mixing it up a little bit, let's go for a game that I have played and probably many, many people have played. Uh, the original Rayman. I mean, first of all, what a great concept. Um, I think it was they tried to do something a little bit Mario esque um for the PlayStation and they ended up with Rayman. And I thought it was actually a great little concept. I mean, who'd have thought that a man that literally every kid could draw because they didn't need to do anything specific in terms of arms or legs. Uh, they could just go like head, body, feet, arms. That's fine. Um, and they, they, they kind of played around with that, um, that idea and, you know, like being able to throw your arm across, uh, to be able to grab something else and use it then as like a swing. I just thought it was a really cool, um, little platformer. Um, the rest of the Raymans, the stories aren't terrible, but, they didn't really do anything different. Um, they kind of just brought the series down, I would say. Um, but I mean, if you're after like the most recent iteration of Rayman, just because you want the experience of Rayman, it is exactly as you know, you, you expect it to be. So for that, I mean, I don't think you could put any of them as terrible games. Um, I would say first Rayman is probably going to be higher. I would say maybe something like a B, but then the rest of them probably firm D's. Firm D's. <laughs> um, <laughs> this is a family I mean, show. <laughs> it's, it's obviously, it's a complete travesty that we've got no raving rabbits on here, but whatever, we can look past that. Yeah. Um, first one is a classic, but I wasn't a huge like Rayman guy when I was a kid. Um, played them, though. They were fine. There's nothing wrong with them. And they're, as I said, classics. They're iconic in the industry. Um, but I will allow you to go as high as you want with them because I can, I can feel that argument if that makes sense okay um so yeah i, I think original rayman you yeah, know probably a b i don't think there's any reason to um have them anywhere else on the list but i think the rest of them like i say solid d's because they they just they didn't really build <laughs> <laughs> they didn't really build off of the um the idea that they they first had it was just kind of more of the same um do you want to pick the next one go on then um i will have Assassin's Creed 2, which, in my eyes, uh, is... Where am I looking for this one? Is it... It is one, two, three, four from the left on the top. This one here. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um, it is the best Assassin's Creed game in the series with the greatest protagonist, Ezio Arditori da Farenzi, and it needs to be on S because it is a fantastic game. Not that's rogue, but it's fine. Oh, okay. You can change that up. <laughs> <laughs> where, where, um, that's what I said. Where am I looking? Four which on one? the left. Oh, this one here. That's three, that's four, yeah. Okay, um, cool. Finished it when it first came out on 360. Picked up the, the Ezio collection on the PS4. Finished all three of them on there. Two was still the best one. Two is the best one. Two will always be the best one. 
and I can't speak any more highly of it. It's amazing, which is one of the reasons why I was so annoyed that Assassin's Creed went down the toilet because that game made it so good that I think it made the others even worse when they're, when to me at least when they came out. Um, but I don't think they'll ever get as good as two again. It was so good. Yeah, so I've never really played two. As I said, my my experience with Assassin's Creed is uh, it's only ever one and three. Um, however, I am extremely tempted to get the new one, um, the Valhalla. It it looks great. It looks like it's um, down my alley a bit more. And from what I gather from the community of people who like Assassin's Creed, it's it's a bit more. Uh, it's a bit different, but it's more of a return to what Assassin's Creed should be. From what I'm gathering, um, but. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 I know that you're a massive fan of this because you've literally gone on about it forever. Um, I don't think there's been a, a day when we're talking about games where you haven't mentioned it, um, and especially Ezio. Uh, and also the fact that, that um, Ezio was the first um, character within the, the series of Assassin's Creed that actually got the, the remasters um, probably says a lot. So, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to have it up there as an S. Yeah, I mean, just going quickly on to Valhalla, I might be slightly tempted, but I can't see me getting it because it comes out on November the 17th and Cyberpunk comes out on the 19th. So I'm never going to play it if it comes out on that date. So I might get it like a year down the line when it's gone down for half price, but I won't be picking it up on the day it comes out. Yeah, I think if you're releasing a game at the same sort of time as Cyberpunk, uh, regardless of publisher uh, and what series it is, it, it's going to have to be something ridiculously off the scale when you know that you know cyberpunk has got such a big following it's had so many delays and people are just queuing up like they if if you if someone said uh, like cyberpunk is getting a release tomorrow but you've got a queue up uh, you know you you would sit in a queue for a week if you had to like it, just so people could get, could get their hands on the game so yeah i uh, i fully agree with that the only thing that i think is going to sell if it were to come out at that time alongside cyberpunk would be something like gta 6 I can't see much else selling that would come out at that point and topple Cyberpunk. Oh, that's that's a good that's a good shout. Um, that's probably a discussion for another video, I think, because yeah, um, yeah I, I think you get two different types of gamer then, don't you? You you hit the the hardcore RPG uh, player, and then yeah, Cyberpunk is an RPG. Well done. <laughs> that's, what, that's what I'm saying. Fantastic. <laughs> You've learned. It's brilliant. <laughs> We've had progression. And then, and then you get the um, the kind of the the casual um, GTA players who just kind of pick up the game and they you know have a, have their five minutes of fun and then come off for a bit. So I think you can like you can hit two different audiences. Um, although obviously you'll get a massive crossover as well. It, yeah, there'll there'll be two different audiences that you can hit with that. That would annoy me though because I'd want to spend hundred hours on both and I wouldn't know what to do first. But anyway, <laughs> Ubisoft. These aren't Ubisoft. Yes. Let's go. <laughs> right. So next Ubisoft game, and I'm going to say. Uh, another S rank, uh, potentially, if we agree on it, um, is Prince of Persia, Sands of Time. Um, I thought this was an absolute banger back in the day. Um, probably one of the fastest games I completed, not because it wasn't a long story. I mean, it wasn't particularly long, um, but the at the time, the graphics were great. The, the idea of re rewinding time was incredible. Well, that's, um, I think that's how you know that you're into a game, me knowing you and how you play. If you blitz through a game really quickly, that means that you've liked it because that's just your style. Yeah. Like, it's like the opposite with me. Whereas if I take not too long with a game, you know that I've liked it. Yeah. I mean, it's like um, with uh, Spider-Man. So when that one came out, I literally completed that in the first weekend it came out. And it wasn't to do with the amount of hours that were put into the game. Um, it was it, like, as in from a story side of it, it was because I sat there and I, I'd literally booked the time off work and I just completed it. Um, I didn't really move off the sofa for that weekend. Um, and that, like, I don't really have an addictive personality, but games that make me just want to sit there and be in that world, um, you know, that, that for me, that's, that's what makes it, you know, something that I would class as an S game. And I, I, I would say Prince of Persia was one of those games at the time where I, cause I, I think it came out on PS2 um, or it's certainly in that yeah, generation too. anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and for me, like it was a first proper um, serious RPG. Um, and I am going to say RPG because you're playing a very specific character with very specific skills. Um, mm. But mm -hmm. It, it it was it you know had a it had a bit of a story to it and like I say the the mechanic of being able to rewind time was ridiculous like I had no concept of that in my own head so yeah I think for me that has to be an S rank yeah I'd agree I mean for some whilst we were talking then I was trying to 
rack my brain and for some reason I don't remember as much about it as you seem to but I do remember having a lot of fun with it and I do remember it being the thing where you'd play it through you'd finish it and then you'd be like this seems to be a franchise that I could get invested in when's the next one give me the next one so I wanted more afterward which is always a good thing um but for some reason it's gone out of my head a bit but I feel like it's because it sort of clumps into all the Assassin's Creed gray area stuff as well so it's all messed up in my head with that, I think. So it's Assassin's Creed fault again. <laughs> yeah. Um, right, so I'll, I'll pop this up there with uh, the S rank, if I'm not getting a, an argument there. Yeah. I mean, if we're going to continue on the, the positive track that we're setting ourselves at the moment, yeah. I've got another one that I'm happy to put on S, and I think you might know what it is already. Um, I think so. It's the definition of insanity. It's Vas Montenegro. It's the greatest villain of all time. It's Far Cry 3. <laughs> um <laughs> Far Cry 3 is the best Far Cry by a mile. And the newer ones are good. Let's talk about the numbered ones because we'll get on to the... <coughs> Primal. Yeah, what should we call the ones that are not numbered? DLCs in a box? We'll call them that. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> Far Cry 3 has one of the best villains I have seen in gaming, TV, and film. I would go that far. Spoiler alert. It's old, but I'm about to say something. So... If you don't want to know because you've not played yet, which, I mean, I don't understand that, but Dan, you're one of them. <laughs> but if you don't want to know because you've not played yet, skip forward 10 seconds, you'll be all right. He dies really early. Not really early, but he dies about halfway through the game, which really annoyed me. So that is one thing that brings it down a bit. So I'm happy to have it not at the top of S, but it must go on S because it's the first Far Cry game that went from Crytek to Ubisoft so it's the first Far Cry game where they tried to do what they now do as standard in all the Far Cry games all the command posts and everything like that so bring take yourself back to the time that was released and imagine how fresh that seemed all the stuff that's now commonplace on Far Cry the first time you see in it and you think how ahead of its time it was and how perfectly acted it was by Mike Michael Mando I think is his name the guy that plays Vass brilliant and all of the stuff leading up to the game, and it was coming out where they did um, like short films, and it was him that was playing it, the actor that was playing himself in the trailers, and it was brilliant. The guns, again, on another Ubisoft game, they felt quite meaty. I feel like Ubisoft are quite good at getting that sorted. Um, gunplay was great. You had all these animals for really the first time, um, predators that could come and get you, and you can skin things and craft stuff. And it was back in the time where people didn't really think of doing stuff like that. Um, and I think it deserves its place on S. Although, I know we're going to go back to it at the end and sort of arrange in tiers, but from the four that are on there now, my two go above your two, just so you know. <laughs> I think we're going to have to come to a lot of compromises, to be <laughs> honest. <laughs> um, but no, I mean, I haven't played this one yet, uh, but as you know, I've just bought it and downloaded it. Um, yeah, and everyone else should, because it is a hell of a deal. Yeah, uh, it was two forty nine. Two forty nine on PlayStation Store. Talk yeah. to me, get um, it. Yeah, I mean, you can't really argue for that price, and it's only eight gigabyte download. I think I downloaded it in like twenty minutes, um, and that's the remastered version. So it's going to have all of the um, like all. I don't know if there was any DLC, but all of those bits and pieces that kind of go along with it as well. Yeah, it's um, got some extra stuff. It's not. It's not technically a remaster. It's called Classic Edition, so it's a bit more of a port. But they have fine-tuned some of the stuff, and there's no real bugs or anything in it, and um, all the DLCs in it and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think on the on the point of Far Cry as well. Um, so, I mean, this is this is again a kind of weird situation, um, and it kind of leads me on to the next one that I was going to pick. It's actually Far Cry Five, um, which I think is going to lead on to yet another Far Cry game <laughs> afterwards. But I would say so. Far Cry Five. Um, was the game where you first got me into the series. Um, now, before you ever said anything about it, I was I, I, I saw the like adverts for it on TV, and I thought, oh, that, that looks really cool. Um, you know, being able to kind of go around to these outposts and you know beat people over the head with a baseball bat um, and and sort of liberate the the area. That that was a really sort of cool concept to me. Um, and I didn't really know much about the story or anything about the Far Cry series before that, um, so I didn't know anything about how good the villains in the in the series were um after our little co-op playthrough of uh far cry 5 instantly i said yeah hit me with all of the series and it it, it was that good of a a, a game um uh, you know in terms of the the villain i mean in that one joseph seed i think I, that's probably one of the best villains that 
I've ever come across um, other than the Joker. Um, again, you know, out of all um, TV and film and uh, games and everything. Um, but that's because I haven't played Far Cry 3. And as you're always telling me, Far Cry 3 is, you know, the, the best um, villain of all time. So for me, I, I would say Far Cry 5 is also a potential S rank in this one. Okay. I know we said at the start that 5 and 4 seem to be on par, but we're starting for... I mean, I've played a bit of 4 before, but I'm, I'm properly starting it again now with you. Um, so just due to that reason that we've done all of five and we've not gone anywhere near as close to that in four yet, I still, in my mind, put five above four and I can probably come back to that once I've finished four, but five at the minute is slightly better than four for me. Um, I just think four's got the potential to be on par with it. So with me already saying that four's got the potential to be on par with five and not saying it's got the potential to be better, I -hmm. would say that five is probably going to be the better one. but. Um, I started playing it when it came out by myself and then I got you involved not too far into it, hour or two into it. So you've seen the majority of it. Um, and so I can weigh up the single and the co-op and I think both of them are really good, but Far Cry 5, I mean, four, you could do co-op, but I don't know if you can do everything on co-op yet. And it seems to take a long time to get to the point point where you unlock co-op. You do it on five after the first like prologue island, which doesn't take long at all. And I really think that to enjoy Far Cry 5 the most, you need to play with a friend because I felt like the co-op was far superior to the single player and the single player was already amazing in itself. Um, But it's just really fun with a friend. But on the whole, I think Far Cry 5 is great. It took a lot of stick when it came out. I think there was a few bugs and things like that. But um, a lot of people were saying that they didn't like um, the premise and the setting of America. Because Far Cry has historically been um, more sort of far away lands. So like four in Asia, you've got three in a tropical island. Um, You've got, I think it was two that was in Africa and you can contract malaria and stuff like that. Whereas they thought five was a bit closer to home. But I feel like the way that they reimagined like a a cult state sort of thing um, was quite fresh and something that was needed for a series like that. Because you've always got to visit America in series, I think. Um, And you said the other day, and I think it's true, that nowadays with Trump, I mean, it seems like something that could easily happen. So I don't think it's unrealistic. Um, but yeah, I'd, I'd agree that five would go in S. But just for my sanity, which is a really good pun that you'll get if you play three, it needs to go <laughs> underneath three because it's not as good as three. I know you've not played it yet, but you need to do that for me as a friend. Thank you. That's, that's fine. I'll take that on board um, when we are discussing where they go later. Um, so uh, that kind of leads us on to the next one as well, uh, just because it's, it would be hard to sort of get it in anywhere else. Um, and I'm going to bring up Far Cry New Dawn. So apologies for anyone who's not a fan of the Far Cry series, and we seem to have gone for three in a row. Um, but Far Cry New Dawn, everyone was sort of slating it when the when the game first came out uh, because they were like, oh, it's, it was a it should have just been like an expansion or, you know, DLC for Far Cry 5, set in the same environment just a few years later. Well, I'll say a few years, but um, I won't throw out any spoilers. Um, for me, as soon as we got onto the game, it, it although it looked similar and it felt similar, it was just, it, it felt like a bit of a letdown, in, if, I'm, if I'm honest. It's, it was nothing like Far Cry 5 to play. Um, and the story, there was from the get-go it just didn't grab me whereas with far cry 5 from the get-go like literally everything happened all at once you were like whoa i've just been thrown into this environment i've really got to get my head sorted whereas with new dawn it was like oh okay this feels like i've done this before um yeah and yeah there was just there was no no real new mechanics to it and you know the also most of the map is pink i mean don't get me wrong there's nothing wrong with that but it's it plays havoc on your eyes. Like for that length of time playing a game, it, it's really difficult to to navigate and to to see things um, when everywhere's that bright. Yeah. So with New Dawn, I I would say that for both of us, it just didn't resonate with us. Um, to go back onto Far Cry Three, and again, this is another reason why Far Cry Three is better than the rest. You've got you've always got a side game with one of the numbered games since Far Cry Three. So Far Cry Three had Blood Dragon with it. 
which by the way, just so happens to be amazing as well, and is almost as good as the actual game. Um, but with Far Cry 4, you've got Far Cry Primal that we'll come on to later, and I think has probably got similar um, thoughts as New Dawn from myself at least. Uh, and then with 5, you've got New Dawn. The ones, usually, that come with the numbered ones, that I feel are DLC, and for some reason are put in a box and sold at almost full price, apart from 3, because that was DLC, that's how they need to do it, um, just don't seem to match up, because I think you've already got it in your head, and you're already on the back foot going in, because you've paid, I mean, they tend to go at like 40 quid, you've paid 40 quid for something that should have been DLC, and is a separate download, you've got to put a new disc in, I just think it's ridiculous, I think it's something they can tack onto it, surely. Um, but on the whole, it just didn't click. Um, again, they're known for their villains. I don't think those twins were particularly engaging as villains. I don't think they were anywhere near as good as the entire Seed family from Five. Um, and when you release those games alongside the numbered ones, I think the only real natural thing that someone can do is compare it to the numbered one. It just didn't compare in the slightest. So for me, I would be looking at FRE tiers. Yeah, I, I think I'd have to agree with you. Um, I mean, I would probably say it doesn't deserve to be an F, but I think, yeah, if you naturally compare it to, to Far Cry 5, um, which, you know, you, you can't help but, but not do it, it's set in the same environment, um, then, then yeah, it, it just pales in comparison. And, you know, if anyone um, from Ubisoft is listening, um, which I highly doubt, but, you know, just kind of take these points on board. Like, I'm happy to pay for DLC. I, I was happy to pay for the idea of New Dawn, but when I've bought DLC before, I've not felt disappointed. This was the first time I really like bought a game and thought, no, do you know what? This is this is literally, I don't want to play this anymore. An hour or two into the game, it was like, no, I, I've wasted this money. Yeah, I agree. Let's whack it in. So on to the next one, and I think this is going to be my first um, F rank. I am going to have to say um, For Honor. Um, now, I never paid for this game, I'll, I'll be honest. Um, it was on a PS Plus, so I don't know if that counts as paying for it, but um, it, it's in my purchase library anyway. But w- what really annoyed me with this game is the fact that, you know, it's a big, you know, AAA game, and it, on the face of it, it seemed really great. You know, you could pick one for one of three classes, um, and it was, well, it was more like a an origin story sort of thing um and you go out and you you know it's very sort of intense fights um and the way that you fight is very methodical you have to think about how you're gonna like when you're gonna block what you can do to parry um the direction that you're gonna attack um being someone who has played loads of games like this um you know i mean i used to play sort of world of warcraft um competitively you know things like paying attention to how you fight is in world of warcraft World of Warcraft, shut up. Um, <laughs> <laughs> stop throwing me off, you. Um, so, yeah, um, I, I'm used to playing those sort of games competitively and, like, paying attention to how things are going. Um, and it's kind of, like, in my blood. But when I came across this, I'll I'll be 100% honest with anyone who's watching this, um, I made it through 45 minutes of the tutorial and decided I needed to delete the game from my hard drive. It was the most unnecessary complex tutorial I've ever come across, and they were just trying to throw too many game mechanics in there. I'm sure if you're on PC and you've got all of the buttons on your keyboard, it's fine, but it's not a good console port, or, you know, it, it, isn't, it, it wasn't designed with consoles in mind, for my opinion, and it just seems overly complex. I couldn't get into it, and... I, I, I've not thought about it again ever since I deleted it. So for me, it has to go as F. I'd be inclined to agree. It's on my purchase list as well, but I've not actually played it. The sole reason I've not played it is because everything that you've just said, um, you've said to me before. So I've never actually installed it. It's just been on my purchase list. So I might do it just to see how, how true you are, but I don't doubt you at all. So it, I mean, the thought of it, brings me out in hives at the minute, so I don't think it's going to be something I'm going to play anytime soon. Okay, so the next one I'm looking at here is Ghost Recon Breakpoint. Um, now, I haven't played this game. Um, however, 
both of us have a mutual friend who has played this game and stopped playing it after about the first hour. Um, and it was slated when it came out for all of the uh, bugs that were in it. You know, I mean, it's it is typical of the 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 times that we're living in where we we get a big release game and then it's like constant patching and updates and you never get a full game um it's it's yeah i mean they, i think they they screwed themselves over because they they wanted to do so much with that game and it it just never really happened so with breakpoint the mutual friend that you spoke about there um i don't know if he has just played an hour but i don't think he's still playing it now but he seems to pretend that he is for some reason, he seems to be the only person that I've ever heard talking positively about this game. But I've not played it myself, um, but I'm not going to... Well, I don't want to, it's your decision as well. But I don't want to put it in haven't played because I feel that this game is the reason that, especially Watch, Watch Dogs Legion, because that's a game that I want, was delayed until October, I think it's coming out now, but it wasn't meant to come out in March. Um and I also think, not that we would never know this, but I think Far Cry 6 probably was planned for the end of this year as well. But that's been pushed to February. So I feel like this game is the reason for that because it came out and just destroyed Ubisoft's reputation. They already had a, a one for having form, formulaic games um, you follow the same formula and they're really repetitive. But this one took the biscuit. Um, you can't just get celebrities in like, is his name John Berthnell, the Punisher guy? Yeah. Um, yeah. That doesn't make a game. Like Call of Duty Infinite Warfare, you can't have Kit Harrington and Conor McGregor in and think that you've just made a great game because you've got two big names. Um, doesn't work. I mean, apparently they've done a lot of changes to it now and it's a lot better, but I've, I've seen it be played before. Didn't work at all. Completely broken. Um, bugs to high heaven. It's the worst game that they've released as a company in their whole lifespan, I think. Um, so even though neither of us have really played it, I think for those reasons alone, it deserves to go on F. Yep. Um, no arguments there at all. So the next game I'm going to pick on is Watch Dogs, and I thought this was a really great game. Seeing as you mentioned Watch Dogs Legion, uh, which looks really great, and you should definitely go and check out the videos that Ubisoft have got on uh, YouTube. Um, this was kind of one of those, I think, sort of pivotal points um, in gaming, and it, it was kind of understated at the time. Like Everybody knew what it was and um, when it was going to be released, but I, th I think it's got like an understated following. Um, mostly because the idea of Watch Dogs was better than the actual game itself. Um, you know, being able to go in and like, hack everything and um, it was kind of like you were a member of Anonymous, you know? And it's... The whole the whole time when that came around was, I think, around the same kind of time that um, the Sony's database got hacked, um, which was... It just kind of made it more prevalent as well. And uh, obviously with a lot of stuff going on in the uh, political... Uh, political media uh, in America as well at the time. It was just kind of really on point, and I thought the idea of it was actually better than the game. However, I still really enjoyed the gameplay. Um, and obviously, off the back of that, we had Watch Dogs 2, which was a lot better, I felt, than the first one. And I am actually quite excited for Watch Dogs Legion, um, especially after the, the, the new gameplay that we've seen. I agree with a couple of things you've said. I strongly disagree with other things that you've said. <laughs> okay. Um, Watch Dogs 2 is better than Watch Dogs. You can have that. Um, <laughs> the idea of Watch Dogs is better than the game. You can have that. Okay. Um, the build-up to Watch Dogs was fantastic. I pre-ordered it. Um, and I was really excited for it. It looked amazing on all of the like, tech demo sort of things they were bringing out. Didn't look anything like that on release. They promised so many things. Never happened on release performed awfully got stuck at like 30 frames per second if you're lucky was buggy um wasn't anywhere near as lengthy as they said it was going to be and was a complete letdown i thought and i don't like it at all and as you know that sort of game is my sort of game so if anyone's gonna like it, it should have really been me didn't like it at all so i don't think it deserves to be any higher than me personally i'd say e but because you say you <laughs> like it i wouldn't want it any higher than d Okay, um, I would just like to point out though, if not for the first Watch Dogs game, although you know it had its problems, I will give you every single one of the points that you've mentioned there. Um, without that, we wouldn't have had Watch Dogs Two, which was infinitely better, uh, which obviously is nice to see. We both agree on, and Watch Dogs Three, which 
by the looks of things so far, will be even better. Wow, so that's quality. Yeah. So but, I, I would I would I would agree this, you know, it doesn't need to be very high, but I would say maybe you'd put it as a C. No, I can't have that. But <laughs> um just Watch Dogs Legion. They're promising a lot again. So I'm really hoping it's not like the first one. But my argument would be I mean it still validates your point to be fair, but my argument would be that the reason we've got the the other two is because this game sold so well because of all the lies that Ubisoft were telling us and everyone bought into it. Um, and I don't know if we should be promoting lies to be able to get a sequel, but that's why I'd say that we've got the next two. Um, okay, so let's let's agree to disagree. I'll put it I'll put it as a D. I think it should be ranked highly in D, but let's just I say think that, I think that's a good compromise because I want E, but you want C. So it's D. It yeah. just makes sense. It's a hell of a firm D. <laughs> family show um so uh that leads us on quite nicely to watch dogs 2 anyway so um i think this really deserves to be a b i think it was it was that much better than the first um actually did deliver on some of the promises that um ubisoft said it would and actually put it the, the series almost back on track i would say i'd agree i think one of the things, another thing that I didn't like about Watch Dogs, the first one, main character, I think it was Aiden Pierce. Yep. Not relatable at all. No backstory that anyone cared about. Didn't have any, he had the emotional range of a rubber duck. He had nothing more to him. Whereas I think Marcus it is in uh, Watch Dogs 2. Much better character. He had a personality, he was funny, and people could relate to him, which I think helped a lot more. Gameplay was far superior to the first one. And almost... Some of the promises that we were given years prior with the announcement of the first, we got in the second one. Not too many because they've got to lie a little bit, but we got a few <laughs> of them and we'll get a few more of them in the next one. So onwards and upwards. But yeah, I think it would be a travesty if it's not at least ranked more than the first one. And um, our channel would be a joke as well. So thank God it's not a joke and everyone should subscribe. I know, right? It'd be, it'd be great to have some feedback as well from people you know, who, who watch this and you know, sort of just see if they agree with us as well. I mean, not just on Watch Dogs on all of this, because um, that'd be quite interesting. And also on some of the games that we haven't played, if people wanted to jump in and say, well, actually, that's, that's one of my favourite games for this reason, that reason, the other, um, there's no reason why it doesn't mean that we won't actually then pick the games up and then have a, a play. So... Um, definitely do get involved. We've got you know plenty yeah. of social media uh, channels uh, sort of up and ready for you to contact us on. Also, this is going up on YouTube. It you know comment, like, share. You know get get everything going. Well, I um, think that this video is probably quite lengthy. So if you've got this far, I have a sort of challenge for you. <laughs> if you've got this far, in the comments, and it, if you're a fan of it, but in the comments, tell me why my opinion is wrong regarding the first Watch Dogs, and we'll have a little debate about it. Let's have a look. Go on. Stick something down there. Pause the video. Whack something down there. Come back. You're done? Cool. Let's carry on. Go on, Dan. <laughs> right. Uh, so, just because there are so many of them in the series, uh, I think we need to mention some more Ghost Recon. Um, I mean, there's probably equal amounts of Assassin's Creed as well, but you will have plenty of airtime on those. So, um, yeah, let's, let's start with... Um, Wildlands uh, on on this particular one. Um, again, this is just th this one was uh, one of those sort of at the time when it came out, it was it was promising a lot of things, and everyone was like, oh, "Yeah, well, we know it's not going to happen." And then it came out, um, and actually, they did kind of fulfil most of those promises. I mean, the graphics on it were really really good. Um, it wasn't just your typical looter shooter, and it did have the open world that was promised, and it was it was quite decent. Um, I mean. I didn't play it for very long. I borrowed a, a copy off of a friend and it was actually, you know, enjoyable. It, it, I'd not really played too many Ghost Recons beforehand. Certainly nothing uh, of, the, of that particular generation. I think the last Ghost Recon I played was on PS2 or something. Um, and it actually didn't feel like a, a Ghost Recon game previously, which I was kind of happy about because I'm not a massive fan of the series. So I would say with Wildlands, I, I, that, I would say that deserves to be a C. Yeah, um, I think it was more of a jump as well from the ones previously. I think the previous ones were a bit more linear than this one was. You had a bit more uh, free reign to kind of do what you want. But the friend that we mentioned on the part about Breakpoint is also a friend that I played Wildlands with. Um, 
the one thing that was annoying is that he made me buy the game and said it was great and then never decided to come back online. But you can't, <laughs> that's not the game's fault. That's his fault. <laughs> Many a text have been sent about that. But anyway, that's a different conversation entirely. Um, but much better than Breakpoint. Um, it is actually, I would call it a solid game. It's not something that if anyone says, oh, what's one of your favorite games? I'm not immediately onto that, although he is, and I find that weird. But again, different conversation. Um, but I'd call it solid. Do you know what I mean? So like C means solid to me, really. You know, It's yeah. not amazing, but it's nowhere near terrible. But if someone says you want to play that, I'd say, yeah, go on then. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I, I'd have to agree with you. It's, um, it's certainly nothing that you know would offend me. And if people would say, oh, what do you think to that game? I would only ever really regard it in, in quite a good light. It, it doesn't deserve to be any better than good. But I think, yeah, you know, yeah, oh, yeah I'd, I'd go back to that game. That's enough for me to, to class it as a C. Um, so do you, w- I, I, I'm just going to say pick an Assassin's Creed. <laughs> okay. Um, I mean, it's going to be the same sort of thing as two because it, I've looked at them now and I'm immediately drawn to one and similar reasons to two. Um, one as in one game, not one as in the first game. Um, the one I'm drawn to is Assassin's Creed Brotherhood. Could you see which one that is? Um, it is here. There we go. Yeah, that's it. Yep. Um, that's A for me. Um, I think out of all of them, it's probably my second favorite game of the series after two. And it was the first one where you'd get, you could build up your own sort of assassin team and your own guild of assassins from uh, assassins that you find on the map and that you go and help and things. And I quite liked that. You could have a bit of team management stuff in it. And as you know, I'm a bit of a football manager fan, so I could sprinkle a bit of FM onto Assassin's Creed. And <laughs> I mean, what's not better without a sprinkle of FM? Um, but Everything. it played... No, not at all. <laughs> it played similarly to the uh, second game, which I've already said I liked. So that's you know nothing that's going to deter me at all. Um, and it's really, it was just more of the same and it was good. Um, but with that extra feature of the building the Assassins, kept it new and fresh. Um, and then I think it was after this game. Mm, well, Revelations will come to in a bit, but maybe after Revelations is when it started to go a bit downhill and they went every year. So this is before there was an oversaturation of Assassin's Creed, so it could be appreciated more. But for me, it deserves to be an A. Okay, that's fine. I've uh, I've put it as an A. I, I don't have anything to disagree with you on. Again, not really playing it too much. Um do you know i i quite like the assassin's creed franchise or at least the idea of the assassin's creed uh franchise and what they tried to do with it i mean so i'm i'm i would pick the next one as being the first one because that's the one that sticks in my mind the 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 most um uh don't ever watch the film by the way it's terrible oh yeah um, um, and it just it's literally it's like they've gone oh uh we've kind of got a story uh but let's make up something entirely different to the game anyway um yeah but Anyway, we'll, we'll we'll skip past that. Um, for me, the 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 idea of what the first game was trying to do was great. Um, I don't think it was amazing by any chance, uh, well, by any chance, by any means. Um, it, it was it was cool. I really like the you know the leap of faith. I like the the stealth aspects and everything, and the you know the the, the being as a monk and all of that for the first time ever. Um, I thought it was actually quite a good concept, and it was only really when they kind of threw you into the the modern day um, side of it that that really pulled me away from the game. Um, which I know that's kind of what it's about, but for me, it was one of those. Um, it deserves to be a good game, but it's certainly not great. Um, and I would say it, it was good for spawning the franchise and the ideas behind it, but I don't really think it deserves to be any higher than a B. I mean, depending on what you say um, here, because obviously your opinion is more valid, I would say, than mine here. But I, I could see it's probably being more of a C than a, than a B, to be honest. Um, I think it had all the right ideas, but as you said, it hadn't perfected them yet. It hadn't blended them into the cocktail that is Assassin's Creed 2. Because Assassin's Creed 2 is really good. I don't know if I've said that before. <laughs> Not sure. Um, but yeah, the, the first one doesn't match up to the second. Um, but it had all the foundations there to build what has become a... What would, I, I use the word behemoth in videos all the time, but there's another one. But it is a bit of a behemoth of a franchise for Ubisoft. And I think 
Do you think out of all of them, it's probably made them the most money? I'd say it has, hasn't it? What, the original um, No, the Assassin's whole fr- or... franchise Assassin's Creed. Oof. I would... Out of all of them, all I... of their series. I don't know, because I would say if you're looking at games like Splinter Cell and uh, Ghost Recon, those series... Um... Yeah, but for Splinter Cell, there's not been one in years, and there's much more money in gaming now. And mm. for Ghost Recon, I don't know if that ever took off, took off. Do you know what I mean? Mm, I know what you mean, but I think they're the. Mm, yeah. Okay. So I, I think they're the the most the most widely appreciated um, franchise that Ubisoft publish. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, but that kickstarted it all, <clears throat> so I think it's got to be recognised for that, and it needs to be put in a position for that. Um, but gameplay wise, and how the game is, it isn't as good as the next ones, um, which were only a year or two after that. Um, so I think it deserves to be where you you've put it. It's not. It's not. I've not one where it's a series that I like, so I'm sentimental for the first one because I'm sentimental for the second. There's a reason behind that, so it's not. It can't be too high, but a reason why it can't be so low is because there, as you've said with previous ones, there wouldn't be that second game if it wasn't for that first one. So it's got to be recognised. Yeah, absolutely, and that, that's why I'm happy to put it as a C. I don't think it's a bad game by any means. I just think there's lots of bits where. Um, you feel very detached. It doesn't feel very immersive. Um, yeah, they just wh- haven't perfected the formula yet. Yeah, exactly. Um, but again, like I say, it's not bad, and I could even see it as a B. I wouldn't argue with it being a B, but I just think, again, it was a solid game. Um, just didn't have everything that the the later Assassin's Creed have. I am thinking, um, seeing as we've sp- spoken about it um, just in passing, uh, let's look at some of these Splinter Cell games. So the only one of these that I've actually played is uh, Chaos Theory. I think, is, is it Chaos Theory? Yeah, Chaos Theory. Um, I just remember the game, um, oh, I think it was on PS2 um, when I had it. Um, I, I, I picked it up and it was the iconic um art that that's on it i was like oh that's different to anything else that's out at the time picked it up and played it a little bit and i thought this could be good if metal gear solid didn't ever exist um and i just kind of think you can't help but compare splinter cell to metal gear solid and for that reason the whole franchise for me is just kind of something i've never bothered picking up after that and yeah, I would say Splinter Cell uh, Chaos Theory is probably uh, probably a D for me. Growing up as a little child, still with a beard and a hairy chest, <laughs> <laughs> um, I had a friend that will remain unnamed because I um, first started trying to do a gaming YouTube channel of this kind with this person, and let's just say it didn't go well. Um, <laughs> But he was a big fan of the Splinter Cell series and it never really was something that I wanted to play because as a child, I mean, you know me and the people listening won't know me as well, but I'm not exactly someone that will sit there and focus on something. I'm quite animated at times um, and my attention doesn't always stay um, on the same thing for as long as maybe it should. And I feel like with, I mean, particularly when I was a child, nowadays it's not as much of a problem because what i was gonna say is that because they are all built and focused around stealth it's quite ploddy and you've got to meticulously plan out your routes of attack and where you're gonna go and what you're gonna do granted my favorite games well one of my favorite games are the last of us games and i'm currently playing last of us 2 and really enjoying it and i'm stealthy af on that (laughs) um but i'm a bit older now so i can appreciate it so maybe if i played these nowadays i'd appreciate them a bit more but the only game, I think I've tried most of them, if not all of them. I certainly recognise every one of them in that list. The one I recognise the most and the one that I know that I actually enjoyed the most was Chaos Theory. I think Chaos Theory is the best Splinter Cell game. Um, and it is one that I would actually say is a good game. So I would argue that that needs to be higher. Okay, so um, I would say uh, it's a D, but I could be persuaded to maybe put it into C. What kind of ranking are you are you thinking of here? B. B? Ooh. I don't know if it can compare to any of the other games in that list, though. 
Or I think people would want to shoot us if we're saying that, but it's our list, isn't it? So it's opinions. <laughs> yeah, if you've got something to say about it, put it in the comments. <laughs> exactly. Uh, or if, leave a dislike if you like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dislike or like, I don't care. Um, just, <laughs> just so we can get some traffic. Um, so, yeah, I mean, just for the sake of being controversial, um, I would say let's put it as a C. Well, um, let's do it. Um, and then, what, what are you saying about the others? Because um, I haven't played any of them, and I think whilst we're on the subject of the Splinter Cells, we, like I've got literally nothing to add. I haven't played any of them other than Chaos Theory. Um, so. I will leave this firmly in your hands. Okay. I've played them all, although some of them I've probably played for about 10 minutes. Um, one that I remember, because I think it may be the most recent one, I could be wrong there, but is um, Splinter Cell Conviction, which is the one where he's pointing a gun this and it one says here. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, hated it. Bought that myself. I was a bit older then, so I thought that I might be a bit more receptive to it. Didn't like it at all. Although there was one thing I'll always remember, which might push it up a little bit for me. Um, you're having a fight in a toilet, and I think it, this I think this is on James Bond as well, so they might have even stolen it. But they're having a fight in a toilet, and he smashes this guy's head through a urinal, and oh, I was like, Jesus. Um, <laughs> so for that and that alone, it's going in the bottom end of E and not F. <laughs> okay, yeah, no, that's, that's fine. Um, let's see what else we got. I, I, I've never played Red Steel 2. Um, yeah, and I, I, I don't have played. Yeah, okay, I, I was going to say, because if you've never played it, uh, the first one, I doubt you've played the second. Um, I think we could easily do the first... Di- that's weird, if that's yeah, what you're going for. I, I was literally I think about we could, easy, <laughs> we could easily do the first Division, and have a look where we put Division 2 and put it one underneath there, because I think the Division's mm-hmm. a good game, but Division 2 is a bit better, because they built on it. Yeah, exactly, and that's, that's what I was going to say. Is like Divi- The Division was um, an okay game when it came out. In fact, I would say it's probably better than okay. It's it's good. Um, but yeah, they just built on it so much more with the Division 2, and there was no reason to go back to the Division now that you've got the Division 2. Uh, like if you're gonna yeah. go, if you're gonna think, oh, I really fancy playing a looser shooter, I'm not gonna go back to the first one. I'll play the second one because it was just better in every way. Yeah. Um, okay, that's nice and easy, wasn't it? Um, checkers getting all on the same wavelength. Right. Um, so let's go for so another of the the series. It, th- this could be quite controversial. I'm I'm happy to be the controversial one in this particular instance as well. Um, so Rainbow Six. Um, in fact. Almost any Tom Clancy game, and and I'm you know I'm fully prepared to take all the shots um, for this. the The issue that I've got is that they are all very similar um, in the fact that they're just about somebody who is name of X agency here, um, and you're you're basically black ops kind of guy. Um, and you just go around, it's a very generic kind of stealthy FPS game. And, you know, there are changes to some of those games. That so, you know, some some of them will be slightly different um, and some of them are, are better for, for other reasons. Like, for example, um, Rainbow Six Siege. Um, that, I think, is a much better game than any of the other uh, Tom Clancy games. But it's basically because it's bit closer to call of duty and i think if you're if you're looking at any of those kind of games you have to be thinking well it's kind of halfway between metal gear solid and call of duty why not just play one of the better games i don't know what what are your thoughts um i don't like them i don't like the rainbow six games at least um I like if I'm not a massive FPS guy, but if I'm going to play an FPS, I want to just run through a room and shoot someone. I don't want to think about tactics and things like that. Because thinking about tactics, I'd train to be in the army and try and get higher up in there and become like a general or something. Then I can do tactics for real. Like I'm playing a game. There, games are good when they have realism there, but you can easily go overboard on that. And I think the Rainbow Six, especially the Rainbow Six Vegas games, really do that. Um, I know that's contentious as well. But just for me personally, they're just not my sort of thing. And the time to kill is horrendous as well. It seems to change with every kill. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm quite happy to to score these very very low. Uh, I would say Rain- Rainbow Six Siege. Um, I'm quite happy to score higher than the others. Yeah, that was better. I mean, again, it didn't really come across with me that much, but I can see that it's better. Yeah, um, not just um, you know because it 
it sort of focuses more on the multiplayer gameplay. Um, Only but, after they changed it again, though. But, well, Ubisoft. yeah. Ubisoft this, this keep is, releasing stuff that don't work. Well, this is what I mean. Like, if you, if you took it from, like, day one release, it would be no better than any of the others, and I would put them all as Fs. Whereas I think Siege, I'm, I'm happy to put as an E, possibly even a D, because I do think there are some aspects about Siege that are actually better than Call of Duty. Um, but, yeah... I think you'd be very hard pressed to score any higher than that. I think the point I was making about tactics with uh, Vegas, it was single player. So you're doing tactics with AI and stuff. The reason that for me, Siege is better is because of the tactics, which I know sounds weird, but I've just said that's a bad thing. But because Siege is just an online shooter and it's a team based online and it's, ta- it's team tack basically. Mm-hmm. Um, so you're, you're talking with your team, you're doing the tactics with your team over voice chat. That's where I think it works, and it works better. I don't think it works in a single-player environment because you can't do tactics with an AI, especially AI that, I mean, this is going to sound harsh as well, but especially AI that's programmed and everything by Ubisoft and put into a game about 10 years ago. You can imagine it might not be the best of times. Yeah, definitely. So um, I would say let's go Siege as E um, because I don't think there's any... Like, if you look at what's in D, like, they're... They're they're almost good games, you know. Um, whereas I don't think Siege qualifies. Um, there's certainly no main protagonist that makes me go, "Oh yeah, I'd recognise the game by that protagonist," because uh, that's not what it's about. And then I think the rest of them uh, Fs. What do you what do you what do you think about that? I would bump Siege up by one because I think if we take into account how many changes they made and how good those changes have become, it's actually a good game now. It's something I can sit down and play with mates. Um, but the Vegas games I'm not a fan of, so I agree with F. But just because they have actually taken time to at least acknowledge the fact that it released and it wasn't the best and they've made some changes and now it is something that is actually quite good and there's actually quite a big fan base for it. I think it does deserve at least middle of the pile because I think for a lot of people it would be higher than that. Hmm. Yeah, okay. Well, I, I, I've put Siege up to D. Um, I, I, yeah, because I do kind of agree with what you're saying. But I don't agree with... Um, having any of the other rainbow six stuff higher than f because they're all basically it's not my thing they're just they're just copies in a different suit aren't they really yeah i mean i couldn't uh, there's fans of it and you know each to their own can see where they like it but it's just not me maybe someone like jake might be a bit more receptive but it's not really our thing is it yeah that's true he's more of the fps kind of guy yeah. um whereas we're more much more story based and rpg uh, kind of guys because i think i would say that for the other ghost recon games as well because Wildlands and Breakpoint, I think, are our own almost separate entity. Whereas those other Ghost Recon games, I can see at the bottom, for me at least, are all the same. Yeah, I, I, th- I think I can agree with you there as well. Um, again, they just feel very much um, like copy paste stuff. And it's like, yeah, yeah. It's, you know, there's not really that much between them that separates them. Yeah. I remember getting Advanced Warfighter 2 and playing it about halfway through and thinking, this is kind of generic. It's a bit of a bland shooter. Just got a bit of tactics and stuff in it so it's like rainbow six so it's along the same lines as that for me uh okay so let's look at the next game and uh let's go for far cry uh blood dragon so uh again i've not really played this one um down to you um it was a dlc for far cry 3 um originally i was thinking i didn't realize why it was on it but it has been released as a standalone at a later date but originally it was dlc for three um same engine as three same gameplay as three however it couldn't be any more different i mean it could even be on the same map i don't know but you wouldn't be able to tell um it had massive dinosaur dragon things like huge massive scale with led lights on them um (laughs) that you had to battle um which was mental um it was meant to be mental the whole thing was a parody on like old school 80s action hero sort of thing. So it was quite funny as well. Um, And I think it supplemented the mainline Far Cry 3 really well because it was completely different, but worked in the same way. Um, And I just think that it married up really well with it. But because it is DLC, I don't think that you can hold it in the same regard as the original full title. So I'd A it for myself. Okay, well that's that's fine because I think when when we spoke about it before, we were saying, um, you know, numbered Far Cry games seem to be good. Anything that's not numbered seems to be 
Not so good. Yeah, this is the one that books the trend. But if, say if this came out as a DLC to maybe four, it's probably better than four. So it, it does book the trend there. Okay. Makes sense. But because um, it came out with such a good mainline, then it is the same as the other DLCs where it's not as good as the one that came out with. But the other two DLCs are nowhere near as good as this one. Okay. And I'm calling them DLCs and they're not DLCs. I, I know like, what you mean. Even so. <laughs> because they're not mainline numbers, yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, uh, just having a look through now. So I think we're at the end of the stuff that I've played. So this is now mostly focused on you, I would say. Other than what we're going to do with the splinter cells, because um, I think, as we already mentioned, um, on chaos theory that i don't th- we well I, d- I specifically don't like them um well we're quickly chaos theory is the best one so chaos theory deserves to be there mm-hmm. conviction i would hold in the same light as double agent which is the black and white one with his bald head i think they were quite similar um and then the other ones there i don't think i've played enough um, and I know there's people that like them quite a bit, so I would feel a bit wrong to say that they were terrible after only playing maybe an hour of the most on them. Um, so I think just for the interest of fairness that we should put there, the rest of them one haven't played. Yeah, okay, that's fine. I'll uh, I'll agree with that. Although if anybody has played them and thinks that they're really great games, um, again, jump in the comments, let us know. Um, have a conversation with us. We, uh, If you go through some of our other videos, you'll see that we actually have been sort of responding to what, almost every comment or certainly every legitimate comment that we, that we get yeah i'm not i'm not responding to sexygirls.com <laughs> yeah um <laughs> that what was it sweet girls online um <laughs> yeah that's it yeah i um, like jeff <laughs> 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 uh, but yeah if you've got something constructive to add um or you, you know if you think that we're completely sullying the name of splinter cell and you want to write that wrong um get involved let us know and we we you know we might even invite you uh to our discord and you know maybe have a chat with us on in in the future about it yeah put someone in the comments to persuade us to do a series on splinter cell if you think you can do that um in the meantime though let's go back to the list uh conscious of time and uh let's let's jump into the assassin's creed um series because let's be honest that is going to take up i mean more than half of the rest of the list so uh this is kind of all in all in your field um i haven't played any of them or other than uh syndicate uh, i played syndicate for a little bit and it was like maybe half an hour I borrowed it for a week off my mate and um played it for about half an hour over that time i didn't think it was terrible i didn't think it was great um I kind of felt like it was completely different to the first Assassin's Creed, which was my only reference point, and therefore I don't feel like I have anything constructive to say about it. Okay, well, again, in the interest of time, I'll try and run through them all quite quickly. Pretty sure I have played all the ones that are here. So, the first one there is Liberation HD, which was... I think was the PS Vita release that's now been given a remaster with the remaster of three that came out on current gen. Um, it's small game, wasn't the best. I've got it on the Vita. It didn't work that great. However, it was, I think, the first time that you had a female protagonist, so at least that's a bit of progression. But that aside, I don't think it was particularly great, so that would be an F for me. Okay. Um, that's interesting that you'd actually put an Assassin's Creed game in the F category, because I know what you're like with that series. It was not going to be the last one, trust me. Oh, okay. <laughs> Controversial. Um, What's next? Three. Three is the game that when I went through the series for the first time, when they first came out, turned me off the series a bit. Um, It's not awful. It's just Connor came after Ezio, and Ezio's the best protagonist that it's had. Don't know if you've mentioned that before. No. So um, for me, three would go into either... Three would go into D for me, I think. Okay. Uh, Rogue was an interesting take on it. So the whole series of Assassin's Creed is about the Assassins versus the Templars, and you always play as an Assassin against the Templars, whereas on Rogue, you got to play as a Templar. Okay. So that was quite interesting to see things from their eyes, and I know for a lot of people that played it, kind of still saw things a lot differently and started to not side with the Assassins as much, so I think it's quite interesting that they did that. Um, 
Gameplay was solid. It wasn't much of a change. It was more of the same sort of formula. Um, but with that new interesting idea, I think it was good that they put another spin on it. So I would put Rogue in C. Okay. Assassin's Creed Black Flag was mm, much better than 3, I think. It brought naval battles in. So I don't know why I had a massive lisp then. Let me go again. <laughs> it brought naval battles in. Um, <laughs> that just sounds really pronounced now. <laughs> with, with no reference point, that sounds retarded. <laughs> it brought naval it brought battles. <laughs> naval battles into the game. Um, so they were actually really good. They were quite fun to do. And it's something that they've implemented more on the um, newer releases as well. So it's obviously something that fans clicked with. Um, I certainly did too. So Black Flag for me, toy in between low A, high B. Um, I'm going to high B for Black Flag. Okay. Revelations. Revelations is the final game in Ezio's saga. Kind of wraps that up. Um, he becomes old and we're with him till the end on this one. Um, don't think it was as good as his other two. So two and brotherhood, I think they were better. Um, I still think it's good. I still think it's solid. And in comparison to the rest of the series, it's one of the better ones. Um, so revelations would fall in the a category for me. Okay. Next, I believe is syndicate. I think that is, is that? Yeah. Syndicate. I feel sorry for. Syndicate was the last game that they did before they moved on to the different sort of take that is uh, Origins and Odyssey. So it's seen as the game that almost brought down what the original Assassin's Creed series was, series was like. But I think that was based on when it was released after a couple of games that weren't the best. Um, because I don't think Syndicate is the worst in the series at all. I think Syndicate's actually a decent game. Um, but it's just been tarred with that brush. So Syndicate for me would go on C. Cool. Uh, I do remember that. Also, being... oh, go on, go on. Do no, go on. You go uh, on, uh, and then okay. I'll go on. Okay. <laughs> I do remember <laughs> when that one came out. Um, there being a lot of stick about it. Um, but yeah, I, I think. Sorry, where, where did you say you wanted this one to go? Uh, C. C. Um, yeah, there was a lot of stick about it um, at the time, and I think you know, like people were just basically saying that it, it it wasn't anywhere near as good as any of the um, well, as some of the previous games had been um, in that particular role. And then I think when they decided to change things up um, and go into like Origins and Odyssey and stuff like that, I think that's why people just assumed, oh, that that game didn't do very well because it it wasn't very well received, and that's why they needed to change it. So yeah, I, I think I agree with what you're saying on that one. Syndicate's much better than some that I think... There is one game in particular that I think was the one that they should have thought, right, we need to change things up now because there was a time when they released two in the same year, one of them being Rogue that I've placed there that I've been quite generous to. The other one we'll come on to. Um, but Syndicate as well was the first... Yeah, it must have been the first one. that Yeah, first one that was set in England. So it was in Victorian London, um, which, as I've said before, if a game's in England, I kind of like that because that's where I'm from. So mm -hmm. that also had a thing. Um, but the game I just alluded to there was Assassin's Creed Unity, which is at the end for some reason down there. Yep. Um, one of the buggiest messes I've ever seen release. The person that we've mentioned earlier on this video when we were talking about um, Breakpoint and Wildlands classes this as his favourite Assassin's Creed game. So, I mean, after <laughs> the comments... Yeah. After the comments that we've um, revealed from him previously... I mean, that should tell you that it's probably the worst one if he said it's the best. Um, <laughs> it's notoriously bug-ridden. It plays terribly. And this is the game that myself and most people blame for the falling of the original idea of Assassin's Creed. Um, and I would go as far as to say that it is an abomination. Um, so it's going in the bottom of F, please. Wow, Ubisoft, take note. Don't ever do that again. Um no. And then that, that only leaves Don't with... release. Oh, yeah, don't release two games from the same franchise in six months, please. Um Assassin's Creed Odyssey is just further continuing on from Assassin's Creed Origins, which I thought was fine, but I wouldn't rate it any higher or lower than Origins, so it would go right next to Origins in B. Cool. Uh okay, so now we've gone off that franchise. Uh, let's go for um, 
Do one that you know, because I need a minute after that I cry. Okay, well, one that I know. I don't think I've got many left. To be honest, I uh, I can talk about uh, Prince of Persia a little bit. So, uh, Prince of Persia from when they were back in the t- sort of early days and they were two D, they were nothing special or certainly nothing that uh, to write home about. Anyway, they were you know side scrolling uh, platformers. Um, that's right, platformer, not RPG. Um, that. Rocket propelled grenade. <laughs> but um you know Wait, it's not a grenade, is it? Well, it's what, gun or something, isn't it? What does RPG stand for when it's the gun? The rocket. No, it is rocket rocket propelled grenade. Alright, oh, thanks. We can get this bit out then. Yeah, you can just we'll cut just, it. Thanks. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah, so you know, other than being the, the, the sort of side scrolling games uh, of the the eighties, I would say, um, which I have played, um uh, as some of you may know that uh Dean uh, at cross platform gaming actually runs um the retro computer museum in thermiston which is uh, just a little uh, sort of I don't, I don't know town i'd guess um in leicester um it's full of all the sort of retro consoles and they have a library of games so if you've uh, if you've always wondered what some of your original classics um would look like on their original consoles i would say go down have a look it's, uh, it's open pretty much every sunday although Things at the moment, obviously, with the current pandemic, uh, uh, make it not open to the public. Um, but yeah, it, they're, they're, you can play some of the original um, Prince of Persia games uh, on on their original consoles um, at Retro Computer Museum. That's what I did, and uh, that was after I'd played Sands of Time. And I just kind of thought, well, hang on a minute, how did they get Sands of Time from this? Um, so I think that that's sort of a testament to. Um, to the development of the game really um but as soon as prince of persia sands of time uh, was over and it kind of then brought out the the next one which i believe if i'm not mistaken was uh, i can't remember the name of it but this one here was it forgotten sands or something um that then became yes that then became sorry a, yeah sorry. it took me ages to unmute again <laughs> um yeah, that then became a bit of a letdown um and nothing about that made me want to pick it up and play it which was a real shame after how well uh prince of persia sense of time had been so i i haven't actually played any of the others um based off of the bad publicity that they got when they came out i got forgotten sands Free, I think, with one of my 360s, because I had about 100 of them, because I used to get annoyed and throw them at the wall. <laughs> <laughs> um, I thought it was all right, but a lot of people didn't like it. Um, but I thought it was decent. It was not, it wasn't, it was never amazing. Um, but again, it's a bit like Assassin's Creed Syndicate for me. It's one of the ones where it seems to get tarred with the brush that killed it. But I think that the cell shaded one contributed to that a little bit more. Um, so I think it's all right. I think it deserves to be towards the middle somewhere. Um, but it's not as good as the other ones. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I would say... Oh, come on. Stop messing about. There we go. Um, so pop it in as a C. Um, and then what are we saying about the other two? Because, I mean, I, I, have, I haven't played them, so... What are the two games they're called? They one of them, Warrior Within? Warrior Within, yeah, one of them. Uh, I can't okay, see what the other first. one is called. Yeah, Warrior Within needs to go just above... Um, Forgotten Sands, it's a PS2 one, and I remember everyone that I played on PS2 was decent. Oh, I think this is this is out on iOS, this one now. We could give it a go. Which one? Warrior Within. Oh, okay. Well, you know, we are we are going to be coming up with a list of uh, of top 10 iOS games, I believe, in the future. Um, so if it's any good, it will probably make its way onto that list, I would have thought. Yeah. What's the other one? Um, uh, I can't really see. Let me try zooming in, see if that's going to... Oh jeez. Um the two the thrones. Two thrones. Yeah. Yeah. Um I think that's the one that came out just after Warrior Within, so I yeah, it's the PS2, yeah. It's um oh, okay, it managed to drop on PS3. Um but it's a it's a PS2 game. Um I would put it in the same light as Warrior Within. They came they were literally one after the other. I played them both, but I don't remember them. Too. I mean that probably shows a bit more about the series. I don't remember them that well, but I remember relatively enjoying them. So, yeah, I think they deserve to be there. Yeah, I mean, in terms of you not necessarily remembering every single one of the games, um, knowing what your games library is like um, and the fact that you have still a list of games that you need to play, including, although it's been out for a few days at this point, uh, Ghost of Tsushima, um, 
I would say that's probably not necessarily a testament to the game if you can't remember it since you play that many that often. <laughs> yeah, I think another reason why I can't is that they're not numbered or anything, they're just subtitled. Yeah. Uh, which... I mean, I know I've said I've just gone through the whole of Assassin's Creed and so are they, but it's a different thing, isn't it, I think? Because they're old as well, they haven't been one for years, really. Yeah, I agree. And I, I'd kind of like to see um, you know, a reboot of the Prince of Persia um, series. But I don't know. If, I don't think they're going to do it because of Assassin's Creed. Well, yeah, I suppose. But if they kind of went off at the back of Sansa Time, and if if they if they say right, Sansa Time was uh, certainly in my opinion like the best Prince of Persia game, then you know, go off of that rather than just kind of changing things a little bit as they did. Um, and they, they could they could potentially revive the series, and it would be yeah. different. I might to... actually uh, give a give that um, iOS one a go. Shall I see if it. As a uh, monetary value at all, I'm guessing it may does. as well. Whilst we're here, I don't want no microtransactions. No, I hate mobile game. You're the mobile game guy. Prince of Persia Escape looks like one of the '80s ones, but that's not the one that said it. Well, what was it? Warrior Within. Yeah, that's not coming up for the search. Let me search Warrior Within. I'd play one of the old school ones. That this is like a fun sitting on the loo kind of thing, isn't it? <laughs> I don't know. For some people, that was the entirety of their like Sunday afternoons. Well, um, and they they couldn't play it on the toilet. <laughs> Warrior within isn't appearing, so unless it didn't come out in Europe or it's been taken down, it's no longer available. Okay, um, let's move swiftly on then to um, the last couple of games in the Far Cry series. Then, so Far Cry Classic, the first one. Um, I haven't played any of these remaining games. However, um, based off of what you've said and also um, doing a bit of my own research, Far Cry Primal, uh, which I believe is this one here. Um, yeah, I've never seen that box art, but yeah, that is it. Yeah. Um, Although, is it just because it's small? I don't know. Maybe. It might I be actually. Know. That might actually be the one that's on the front of the one that I've actually got. I just can't tell. But sorry, carry on. Yeah. Um, so from what I gather, that is, I think, quite widely renowned as the worst um not necessarily a terrible game but the worst of the series so i mean that that's just going off of what i know about it and uh like from from reading some reviews and other people in the sort of far cry community i suppose um i think it was an interesting premise and an interesting way to take the series it's the same map as four it's just prehistoric but whenever cave Cavemen weren't prehistoric, were they? God knows, because you didn't have cave- you didn't have humans when you had dinosaurs. I know that that's a fact, <laughs> and that is a free one that you can take. Um, but it's the same map, but completely different because it's a different time period. So it's almost lazy, but not lazy. If that makes sense, mm-hmm. um, they could have done a lot of things with it. I think, but Far Cry as a game and a franchise needs. You have your stealth where you're going with a bow and everything like that and you clear up camps. Um, but it's an action game. It's a shooter. There's no guns in it. It's not, it doesn't really ring as a proper Far Cry game. Um, but this might be a con- controversial point as well. I prefer it to New Dawn. I think it's better than New Dawn. Oh, um, okay, interesting. I don't think it's the worst one in the whole um, back catalogue of the series. Um, I think it's probably second worst. But I think it is better than New Dawn. So I would still put it in E, but I'd put it above New Dawn. Okay, that's fine. Um, so this one's Far Cry 2, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Far Cry 2, I don't have anything to say about it. I haven't played it. Um, you were telling me the other day about um, the, the whole sort of series of Far Cry. I believe you were like talking about the villains or something. And you said Far Cry 2 is actually... Not not a bad game at all. Um, I don't think it was one of the best that you, that you played, but certainly not the worst. Yeah, Far Cry 2 is actually really good, especially for its time. Um, I think if you were going to go back to it now, it'd be due a remaster. Um, but they these two are the Crytek games, so they had the series before Ubisoft acquired it. Um, so they are different games. 3, 4, and 5 are seen as the same thing, whereas 2 and 1 are seen as the same thing. Mm-hmm. Um but it is good. It's got the way that it did the malaria um, like feature that I was on about earlier was quite clever. Um, set in Africa, you don't get many games that are set there. The villain in um, two 
can't remember the name for the life of me, but I remember it still being quite a strong villain. Um, so that was something that they really continued in 3, 4, and 5, but it was there at the start. Um, and it's a respectable, decent game. I would put it top end of B, I think. Oh, okay. Fair enough. Um, and then, just because it's the last one in the series, um, Far Cry Classic. Um, similar to 2, but not as good as 2. Um, I've got this one. I got this one on PC, actually. I only played it on PC. I don't even remember it being a console game. I'm guessing it will have been. But I only ever got it on PC, um, which is weird for me, because that's like years ago before I even had something that could properly run it. Um, decent. But again, it's a bit like the first Assassin's Creed. Ideas were there. They just weren't all married up into one yet. Um, but it played well. They haven't got anything really negative to say about it. It's just not as good as the rest. Um, so I think the best place for it is C. Okay, fine. I think it was called Instincts or something. Far Cry Instincts. That rings a bell. That, I might be wrong. Yeah, but that, that like rings a bell, to be fair. Now, I cannot read what this says. That's Beyond Good and Evil. All right, okay. Cool. I know a lot of people like that. It's like a cult thing. I've never played it. Yeah, I've also never played it. So I think there's only one thing to do there, and that's put it in. Yeah. Haven't played. That probably annoy people because I think there's a big fan base for that. Yeah, but I, I mean, I'm I'm happy to be all con, uh, all, uh, all kinds of controversial, but only when I know something about it. And to be honest, I I don't know anything about that. So no, it'd be unfair to judge. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but again, if you think it's a game that we should pick up or should at least give a try, um, let us know in the comments. And okay, so th this is how the the list oh. is looking now. Oh yeah, go on, go on. I think that's the game that's got the pig in it. Um, have you seen the trailers for the new games for like PS5 and stuff? No. There's... Um, the new one's coming out for that, and I think it's been years since that first one, and there's a lot of people excited for it. So I think it might actually be something for us to have a look at because the new one's coming out, and it, a lot of people are talking about it, so it might be worth it. Okay, well, uh, comment section, let us know. Um, but, yeah, so th this is the way that the list is looking at the moment. Um, you can't see all of it on the screen, which is a bit annoying, but... Um, yeah, so let's 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 start with the bottom. Uh, I mean, obviously, ignore the haven't played because I don't really think you could put that in an order because we haven't played it. No. Um, I haven't played this the most <clears throat> as this one. Yeah, exactly. I haven't played that as much as I haven't played that. You know, exactly. Really, exactly. I mean, I, none none of those games that I haven't played make me want to play them because I don't know anything about them equally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly i mean you might want to play red steel too you've played red steel who knows uh yeah i mean i could dig the wii out but yeah i mean not really <laughs> top of my priority <laughs> list when we've got some good games that are going on at the moment um so any rearranging or any placements in f that you that you think we should change so if we if we look at the the latest one so the furthest one along being the best and the the, the furthest like, sort of to the section as being the worst yeah, left 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 to right and then when you go to the second line it continues on yeah yeah so the only change that i want i want to ensure that assassin's creed unity is at the end but the one before that i want ghost recon breakpoint so you want this to be sort of the best of f and then you think breakpoint next yeah no that's the worst right okay so you're okay so that way so left left to right no left to right from the top so best are the first ones that you, you're now putting that in best and then they go across to right and then it follows on so it goes from best at the start to worst at the end right okay i was thinking it'd be the other way around but okay fine no. so unity is the best of f then no unity is the worst okay so that, that was right then <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. What I said, I wanted to change. I wanted to there. keep that there, but break point in front of it. Okay, cool. Um, I I want to... Which, ha oh. which hasn't happened, but why, I'm all Why right is yet. that not putting it there? That's weird. <laughs> that, literally, go there. Okay, that's fine. There we go. Um, I would also say that For Honor, um, from what I've played of it, deserves to be very, very low down. So I'm not going to put it right at the bottom, you know, in terms of Unity, but certainly... I think here. I think the rest of it's probably fine. Any? Yeah, yeah. I think I think that works for me because I don't think we can put the Ghost Recon and Vegas ones in order as such. No, not really. I think they're all equally. And Liberation as bad. <laughs> deserves to be there. It's just a small game. 
I feel a bit bad for it because it's a Vita game that's going up against other ones, but I mean, you can only judge it on what you got, haven't you? So exactly, yeah, and it, it maybe it speaks more more volumes that it it was only released on Vita, or the fact that there are no other Vita releases in here. You know, it 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 could say that yeah. I mean, it we all know it wasn't a great platform anyway, the Vita. But why would Ubisoft controversial as well? Well. I don't think so. I think if you're looking at handheld consoles, um, there are plenty of better ones for their age. Uh, I mean, obviously, most recently, the Switch, definitely the best ha- um, handheld console that I think has ever been. Um, yeah. Second to that, I would say you're looking at probably the first ever Game Boy. Um, I would say... E- this even for this its- is definitely another video as well, though. Oh, yeah. Okay, well, let, let, <laughs> let's, let's leave that there, then. Cause, let's not give too much yeah, away. Let's leave that there. But uh, I will fight for the Vita. But then we'll see more <laughs> of that at another point. Yeah, um, yeah but Vita versus PSP. Ooh. Ooh. That's a tricky one. Exactly. I mean, I've, I know who's won, though. Oh, yeah, so do I. So that would be interesting to find out what that is. Um, so, yeah, E. Um, anything you want to change about E? Uh, I want Primal above New Dawn. I'm not that fussed where they go, but I just want Primal above New Dawn. Okay. Um, yeah. See, I, again, I'd be happy with the way that is there at the minute. I'm not not too not too bothered. Yeah, I'm cool with that. Oh wait, no, it was already above New Dawn. No, it wasn't. Shut up. No. Why do you keep thinking it's that I d- way I d- around? I don't know. It's just weird. Um, <clears throat> D. So in D, I want to change. Watchdogs to be probably the best. Oh Jesus! Okay, well, Assassin's Creed Three is better than Watchdogs. Okay, but we can agree it's definitely better than Siege. Mm. You can't really compare them, but Siege is probably better than Watchdogs. Which game have you put more hours into? Neither really, but there's probably an extra ten minutes on Siege. Okay, so I didn't finish Watch Dogs. Didn't want it. Terrible. Okay, so l- let's leave it there then. I think that's no. Let's no no. no. Assassin's Creed Three goes above. Yeah. Oh no. Okay. That's not. Never mind. Stop doing that. <laughs> it's, it feels weird. Um, okay, so then let's put uh, Siege there. No, there. Yeah, that feels right. Um, C. Oh, I think this is gonna, this is going to be where we start. Get, it starts getting really difficult. You know. Um, yeah. What do we do? So, I don't think Red Steel deserves to be the best. Um, no. It was a good game, but definitely not any better than some of the titles in here. So, I would, I would say, out of all of these, the best for me because I haven't played Far Cry Classic has to be Assassin's Creed. The original. Yeah. Uh, Syndicate's better. Okay. So you'd have... Which one would you have at the, at the start? Which one would you say is the best of this section? I, th- I think it might actually be Chaos Theory. Oh, okay. Cause I just think it means a lot. If there's a series that I'm not particularly invested in, but I try one of their games and I think, actually, this is quite a good game. And it's not really a series that I like. I think that just shows that it's a really good game. It's just perhaps not something that connects with me as much. See, I would say Assassin's Creed, the first one, is better than Splinter Cell. I can't speak that much for Syndicate because, like I say, I only played like half an hour on it. Um, and it was completely different from Assassin's Creed. So if you say that Assassin's Creed Syndicate is better than the first Assassin's Creed, I would say... Assassin's Creed, the first one, is better than Splinter Cell Chaos Theory. Okay, well, that's that's mm-hmm. two things. One thing that we want each, so it's a compromise to put them both in, isn't it? Yeah. So we'll do that. Okay. Um, I think Wildlands is a strong game, so I think that should go above Rogue. Um, and I think the first Far Cry should go above Prince of Persia and then Red Steel at the end. I am happy with that. Oh, I, I could agree with that. Um, yeah, I think that looks right. Yeah, and then if we... Oof, B is going to be difficult, I think. Oof. I can already see towards the end that there is a decision I'm probably going to have to make <laughs> that's going to hurt, but we'll get to it. Okay, okay. So first up, we'll, we'll look at B. Now, I'm happy for 
almost any of these games to be classed as the best of this category. Yeah, Watch Dogs 2 probably. Yeah. Black Flag, I think, has got a, a shout, but um, Watch Dogs 2. Yeah. Just because of how better, how much better than the first one it was. Okay. Um, put that there. Now, would you be happy with that Origins being better than Black Flag? I'm not first either way, actually. I think um, Origins, I mean, this, I don't think people agree with this either, but I think Origins is a little bit better than Odyssey. They're both the same game, really, but I preferred Origins a bit more. But they're both quite decent. Okay, so kind of irrelevant, really, is in position for these. Yeah, three, that's yeah? fine. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm not too bothered where South Park goes. To be honest, I think it's 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 a solid B in any of these. <clears throat> but I I think, um, Rayman should probably be in front of it because it's more. Well, you know, it was the first of its kind, and it's more. I guess widely known, like people will look at Rayman like and and just know how to play it, and you know it just is very simple, very easy, and like I said uh, earlier, they they tried to make it very sort of Mario esque, so I think that was um, that was a good shout by them, and I think that deserves to be in front of South Park. Um, yeah. I think my only last real request on this one would be um, bump in the second Far Cry in between Rayman and South Park. Yep, I'm happy to go with that. That's fine. Now, oh, this is going to get very, very difficult from from here. I think we're yeah. going to start running into some real issues. Um, so one thing that I can say off the bat easily, because I said it when I spoke about the games, mm-hmm. Brotherhood is better than Revelations. So that's that okay. done. We know that Revelations always has to be behind Brotherhood. Yep, that's fine. Not a problem there. Um, that... Blood Dragon goes above four for me. Okay. And then well, it's whether if that if that goes in front of four, when it would do yeah. it, um, then for me the winner has to be the division two. Be- not yeah, not, then I was not necessarily say, for the quality of the game, but more for the nostalgia that it that it gives it's us. To us. It's XPL. It's what created this whole channel. Yeah, if you go back and look at the very first video that we ever did on this channel, it will be on the division two. Uh, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, it's called the dangers of parkour. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's because I fell off of a set of stairs. Um, yeah. Okay, so yeah, I, I think that kind of has to be for us there. Um, yeah. <clears throat> so this is where we might have an argument. Yeah, potentially. So, stick of truth, I'm saying it doesn't need to be the best, right? Han- I think that down. goes at the bottom. I, 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 I will agree with that. Yeah. No, no problems there. I would also say that whilst Prince of Persia was good uh, and uh, and very, very good, I had more fun playing Far Cry Five than I did playing Prince of Persia. Yep, um, my next one would have been Prince of Persia. Okay, so I would say that needs to go there. Now, I've not played Assassin's Creed. Which one was that? Three, two, no, two. There, two. Um. So, I know this is very difficult for you to pick where this is going to go because you've got Far Cry Three, which has got your most favourite villain of all time in there. Far Cry Five, which was a great co-op game for the, the two of us played, um, and I think it was a more enjoyable experience because the two of us played it. Um, and then your favourite protagonist in all of the Assassin's Creed series. So this is, I think, what we do is. For me, how I had it in my head was from worst to best, and I don't like saying worst because they're S, yeah. so none of them are bad, but worst to best, Stick of Truth, mm-hmm. Prince of Persia, yep. Far Cry 5, Okay. then it's between two games that I love, so I thought, I don't think I'm going to be able to make it up. You've never played them. You, it's you. You're doing it. Oh. I don't think I can do it. Okay. So, put, okay, so whilst we're doing it, yeah. swap Far Cry 5 and Far Cry 3, yeah. and then we'll talk about them too. Okay, so now... The the only difference that I would make to this list is I would be happy, and this would be more of a compromise for me. Um, I would I could see it going like this, and the reason okay. I say it would go like this. So I haven't played Assassin's Creed two, I haven't played Far Cry three yet. Um, however, this game made me fall in love with the series, and it hasn't let me down. So the fact that I have so much love for this game, uh, being Far Cry 5, I 
I would quite like to see that there. But oh yeah, well, well, no, 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 <laughs> that uh, no, I'm stopping that. I'm letting you decide but, on two well, games you've not played. But, okay, so, so you can have that. Yeah, so that, that <laughs> this is what I'm saying. This would be my compromise. This is where I would be happy to leave the list. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm cool with that. I think what would what is it is for me is you haven't played Assassin's Creed 2, you haven't played Far Cry 3, you're going to play Far Cry 3, you're not necessarily going to play Assassin's Creed 2. Yeah, and I think that has to be because of the the, the games that I've played in the series beforehand. So, all yeah, right. So, and go on. I also think it's kind of my fault because they're two games that I like and the only reason you're playing 3 is because I got you into 5 and I've said that 3 is my favourite one so you need to play it. But I've also said 2 is my favourite one but I must have pushed three more than two because otherwise you'd be playing two and uh, Assassin's Creed two as well as Far Cry three. But you're not, so that means subconsciously I've pushed three more than two. So three's got to be top. Yeah, um, I, I mean, I was going to say the fact that the, the if I if I look back at the games that I have played in those series, so Assassin's Creed one and Syndicate, um, they weren't great. Um, I know it was it's it's kind of unfair to then go right. Well, but I played the fifth instalment of Far Cry, and that was great. I've also played New Dawn, and look where that ended up in the list. But the fact that Far Cry Five was that good would then say to me, actually, Far Cry overall is probably a better series than the overall Assassin's Creed series. Yeah. Now again, that could be controversial. Comment down below. Um, but I'm I, I'm quite happy to stick my neck out there and say, no, I think we've got Far Cry as a better series than Assassin's Creed. So that's it for us with the list of best Ubisoft games. If you agree with what we've done or the placement that we've put some of these games in, and even if you haven't agreed, let us let us know by leaving a comment below and uh, either the liking or disliking the video. Either way, it helps us out as a channel. And, um, you know, it'd be nice to get involved with some of you guys. So please leave a comment down below, like and share the video or dislike and share the video um, and stay safe.